All right, how's it going? This is a new episode of Comics and Nonsense. Uh, the first edit I did was uh, kind of blocky and terrible, and this one's going to be blocky and terrible too. So if you're watching this right now, you're going to see a bunch of squares to the side. So it's whatever. How's it going, David? Welcome back. I'm, I'm doing good, D. How you doing? I'm not too bad. Just uh, finishing up that anime called Baki. You're watching Baki? Baki. No, I haven't it's, seen that one. It's like Fist of the North Star meets that John Claude Van Damme movie called The Order. It's like both of those things put together. Oh, or uh, oh, what, was it, is it that on told? Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. It doesn't get good until the third season, I think. Like for me personally, like it doesn't get good until the third season. Season three is where it really like goes tournament based, really takes off. Before then, you're watching all these characters like like uh, meeting up each other like in dark alleyways or mm -hmm. like break into their homes like just just to fight them. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. It's a super weird anime. A lot of weird nuances into it. Like, it has like a lot of different cultures of like Japan and China and Taiwan and like some loosely American cultural tropes inside of it. They put Muhammad mm -hmm. Ali inside the show. It's, it's all over the place. Wow. Um, the only anime that I have watched. Um, watched. And I, I, Not watching, but watched. All right. Well, yeah. Because Don't watch I, many animes? I do watch anime. I do. Okay. But um, I usually space it out because if I watch anime, I consume too much of it and it just becomes like this thing where I just keep watching and watching and watching. You sound like me. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, I tried one of my uh, twin sons was into One Piece and he came over to the house and he's like, he's like, hey, turn on the One Piece for the boys and start watching it. And I got into One Piece. It's and on Netflix right watching, now, right? Season four. Yeah, it's on, yeah, season four, yeah. And it was on Netflix, and I was watching it. And then as I was watching it, I realized there's like, what, another six or seven or eight seasons of it, and they're yeah. on, Hulu, on Hulu. So I flipped over to Hulu just to scan through to see what they're about, and I stopped watching it after that because it's all – Japanese with English subtitles. Oh, so it's all subbed. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, the voices for One Piece is even a higher pitch than it is in the English for version. what it is for the English dub. So, <laughs> I mean, the animation is cool. The way the characters are drawn and everything is totally cool. It's just I couldn't get past the. Uh, the subtitles and the people who are voicing the characters. It was a little, a little too much for me. I hear it goes like you know a little bit of different pacing than say the Dragon Ball Z style of right. uh, anime. Right, right. Like, like I don't really have a problem with that. It just uh, I think there's over like nine hundred and thirty some episodes of that show. Nine hundred and forty episodes of that of One Piece, and you know. That's cool and all, but you know, I think I'm good. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I no, think I got, go ahead. Sorry. No, no offense. Like, it's, I just can't do it. You know, <laughs> I, I hear you. I hear you. I think I got through season one where they just crossed over the grand line, and that's when I went to look for the other episodes. And when I saw the other episodes and I saw what was coming, it kind of turned me off. So I stopped. So then I jumped over to an anime was recommended by our artist, Sean Aleen. I can't remember the title, but is it was about a, char uh, a character who head got turned into a lizard. Oh, right. The new one's on Netflix. Uh, like, he forgets who he is, and he becomes a lizard. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I saw yeah. that on it's Tumblr. It's like, you know what? I should probably check this out. I still haven't checked. It's in, like, my watch list. I haven't, I haven't watched it. Did you watch it? It's, yeah, I did. And it was pretty good until you got towards the last couple of episodes and I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. Huh? <laughs> no, I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't. And the thing about me with anime is like, when I get into it, it's just like, there's that old saying, jump the shark. Yeah. If I get to a point where they jump the shark, it's just like, I'm done. I, I, I'm moving on. I get the same way. Like uh, if it goes too far, like beyond that, beyond like the beaten path, like I can't keep putting myself into this. No, like, no. Like that, that B and A, you heard of that one before? B and A yeah. anime. I, yeah. I watched that one there. Like, uh, it's cool. It just is. It's it's, it's it's for a different breed for people who are like into like furry type stuff. And like, that's not really mm -hmm. my cup of tea. Like, no, no shame to them. It just I can't 
watch stuff like that, man. It just, yeah, just can't. No. So. No, no. And this is from a guy who grew up watching Robotech. So. I mean, so yeah, like, like we're pretty versatile when it comes to anime, like, but there's a limit yeah. to everything. Yes, there is a limit <laughs> to everything. I mean, between Hulu, between uh, Netflix, and then there's Crackle. Even there's Amazon so Prime much, has some cool stuff. And Amazon Prime, yeah. there's so much um, anime that you can choose from. It is just overwhelming. I did finally check out My Hero Academia, but it was the movie Ooh. that I watched. And the movie was sick. I bet it was good. And the show, yeah, was, the movie the show was, was really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe I should give the show a try. Um, so that's on my list. And then I sat through Naruto with my twins. I Which went, one? Went, Shippuden or the original? I think... I think it was the original and Shippuden. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. We even all we even made it up to um, when he became a Kage. Oh, so like you're watching like the Boruto also then? Huh? Yeah, we got to Boruto, but then we stopped. We didn't mm. finish Boruto. Um, I stopped midway through Shippuden. It was all it was all sub and mm. and as as much as people may get upset about this, I'm not the biggest fan of watching sub titles anymore mm-hmm. like dude when i was right. younger kinshin kinshin sub was the best sub there was but like as i'm getting older mm-hmm. i can't keep looking down then looking up then looking down like i just whatever call it say what you want but i can't keep like you know looking at two parts of the screen as i'm trying like, to enjoy something that i really want to watch even though you got this new tv show movie you want me to watch witching and bitching <laughs> such, a, <laughs> such a horrible title for a movie but uh, that's it's an italian flick right yeah, it's an Italian flick. And uh one of the actresses one of the actresses in it is from Dagon, which was a Lovecraft movie. Uh uh is that, that how is you found done. out about it? No, no, that's not how I found out. It's like I was flipping through doing my usual thing late at night, flipping through Amazon, looking for something, you know, stupid to watch. <laughs> and 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 I found it. Um because I have seen usually have some decent independent films that you won't see um you're, you're sometimes in the pleasantly stream. surprised yeah i'll, I'll yeah. get to that yeah and so that's how i stumbled across witching and bitching and you know i just just i just got sucked in but that's for another day uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least at least now i know your process i know like the process of how you find these terrible movies right yeah that's that's for another day we're not we're not going to go down that road um, but when you but going back to subtitles, look, the only time I like subtitles is if I'm watching like um, Indonesian films or um, uh, the the karate films from Hong Kong and or China. You know those big expansive films. Like the last one I watched was Foxtrot Six, and the action in it just overruled the subtitles. How old is that one? Uh, I think that one was two thousand. 17 or 18 i think i've heard of that one yeah yeah um it is crazy it is crazy. it's a slow build but then once the action starts going the martial arts scenes are crazy yeah i've heard of them before fox said it's on amazon yeah 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 it is just uh, <laughs> it's just crazy and you know and it's not it's not a cheap film it is Production wise, you mean? Production wise, they put some serious work into it. Um, I'm not going to say it's a Michael Bay standard, of course. <laughs> is that is that your top tier? Is Michael Bay? Your no, top no, tier? I, I'm not, and I'm not doing it any credit if I say it's a Michael Bay standard. So let me roll that back. Uh, <laughs> but the one thing I love about those movies and those type of genres, they always have these cool, mysterious figures. You know, they that. just don't either don't say anything, but they can just lay down on, you know, throw some so throw some dubs on some people. It's, a, it's a cool trope. It's a cool yeah. trope. Yeah, like yeah. It, the old yeah. the duster cowboy feel to it. Yeah, it works for yeah. a reason. Yeah, yeah, it works for a reason. Um, the, the the character in there is called Spec. He's like, <laughs> he doesn't say much, but when he does, the characters listen. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. See, now I'm looking for it. I'm trying to find it on Amazon now, like while while we're recording. I want to see if I can find this guy and yeah. watch it later. I'll put this in the. Oh, it's it's a Prime Prime original. Oh hell yeah. Yep. If you check out the trailer, trailer is just trailers what sucked me in. You know what? Like that was a point in my life where I where I didn't watch any trailers whatsoever because I figured you know, you know like how you watch a lot of trailers and like you get like mm-hmm. you know like the feel for a movie and you know what's going to mm-hmm. happen even like even before you watch it because you watch a trailer mm-hmm. that's why i stopped watching trailers for a good long time because of that reason well, i'm trying to get back yeah. into watching trailers again yeah i'm totally with you on trailers because i've sat there and watched trailers with my wife in the movie theater with the boys when we could go to movie theaters <laughs> um and my wife will turn to me he's like well that's pretty much the entire movie yeah i mean <laughs> no. yeah like <laughs> You miss some like subtle nuances, but like you pretty much watched the entire film. So why do I need to watch this? Right. We're just we're just going to take all the best parts of the movie and put it in one trailer. But we're not going to tell you it's going to be a you know it's a two hour movie. But we give you the best <laughs> points, the best part of the movie, and that's about fifteen minutes of that spread out in a two hour movie. So just like what's the point of even going back to watch? Like oh yeah, I remember watching. I watched the entire trailer. So I mean, I watched the entire movie. Yeah. Uh, you had some news you wanted to bring up. We got like a couple of news stuff we want to talk about here before we talk about that crisis on infinite earth. Uh, right. I'll, I'll, so, I'll let you start it out. So I was disappointed to hear that Venture Brothers was being canceled. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, Venture Brothers was a callback to my days as a kid watching Johnny Quest. And it, <laughs> they even, you know, I still even remember the episode when they, Play, pay tribute to Johnny Quest when he showed up as a uh, <laughs> at the bottom a, of the ocean, all all like wigged out on drugs, just, just in his underwear. Yeah, yeah, just in his underwear, and uh, you know, and that uh, race was uh, the bodyguard's mentor. <laughs> you know? Oh man, yeah, it was, it was a cool nod. Like that first season, first two seasons of Venture Brothers, uh, when it first came right. out, it was right. uh, it was so. So original, but like mm-hmm. still like that, that had that, that same like like nostalgia feel that you love and watch right, those right. Hanna Barbera shows. Right. It just right. and then they just kept it going. I'm not sure how far I you know. got in the show. Like I finished like the entire series, but uh, they did a lot of wicked stuff. Like with like a lot of throwbacks to stuff like you may not know, like from the 80s and 70s and even like like mm-hmm. the 90s. It's just right. I want to miss that show. I want to miss it. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's like I've been trying to catch up with it, but like. As you said before we started uh, recording, they take a two-year hi- hiatus yeah. between seasons. So the only way you find out a new season's coming is if you happen to be on Adult Swim and you see, oh, new episode, and you turn it on. Yeah. But but one of my favorite characters was the Mardark's uh, girlfriend. The Dr. Mrs. The Mardark? Yeah. Yeah, just because of her voice. <laughs> She was a force, though. Like, uh, you said you haven't finished like, the entire series. Like, if you keep watching it, like, her title mm-hmm. changes every single season. And, like, those two-year mm-hmm. breaks that they take, the, mm-hmm. the entire tone of the show would completely change because of mm-hmm. those breaks. Like, it'll go from, like, a, like a, a story about, like, the kids and like, them being a clone. Then it'll change, like, to, <laughs> to like, a, to uh, Brock, like, fighting in the, in the OSI or Sphinx. Then, like, it'll switch again to, like, like a showing oh, mostly yeah. the monarch like it'll just keep switching the camera to different characters and they'll be doing mm-hmm. entirely different things they were doing like the season before like uh those two-year breaks were good but like it, you're right it, it just took so long for like to keep on switching it up and like you know go away for too long and just yeah it was a lot yeah i, I know i remember sphinx i remember that one that was crazy and they kept saying sphinx every time like you know <laughs> <laughs> she was hilarious Every time you said that, they had to say it like in the most like uh, awkward way possible. But uh, I got some news. It's uh, right. DC news. I think most of my stuff is going to be DC news today. Okay. But, okay. Uh, it's Brian Michael Bendis is leaving Ashen Comics and Superman. He's not leaving oh. DC comic books, but he's leaving both Ashen Comics and Superman. Uh, I'm not, have you been reading the Superman comic books recently? No, no. I haven't been reading Superman. I, I got to be honest with you. Superman... I only like my Superman is if he's in the Justice League or he's teamed up with Batman. I can't stand him on his own. You missed out on some good stories, man. The real good stories. Like I love Superman what? by himself and doing like his Superman thing because I'm not sure how you see Superman, but like the way I look at him is he's more mm-hmm. of a 
he has all the power to do all those things that people say he does. Like he, he mm-hmm. is OP. He is like, you know, the super awesome uh, mm-hmm. guy who is, who is hard to be stopped. But I think mm-hmm. that's the beauty of like reading a Superman story and having mm-hmm. someone write a story for him. Because mm-hmm. if you set those stories up for Superman about how he can't, how he can't um, stop people from doing stuff. Like, uh, so say like, like he's fighting like an, an antagonist and like, it's not about stopping the antagonist, it's about saving a person. Right. You gotta find out how to save that person without like causing harm to a person who's the antagonist and harming mm-hmm. a person who's like who's being captive. And like that's the story of Superman. It's like how mm-hmm. like to stop both of these people from doing something horrible to each other and to the world at the same time, but also being like the good guy in the situation. And that's that's a hard thing to write in my eyes. Like personally, I think that's a hard thing to write for. Right. Right. I, I think the best super, the last Superman I read, correction, was Superman Unchained. Did not care for that story. <laughs> Scott Snyder wrote it. Did not, did not like that story. I think it was that's Scott Snyder of, and Jim Lee. That's one that disappointed me with Scott Snyder. You're not a fan of Scott Snyder? I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Scott Snyder, but that one disappointed me. Dude, and, 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 Superman, like, almost commit genocide. I know. I what know. the hell? And then, and then the twist was when, you know, the nuclear bomb was dropped on Japan. It wasn't an actual nuclear bomb. It was a super-powered uh, genetic freak of a something that just yeah. hit the ground. It just cost. Uh, 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 I say this a lot about Scott Snyder. Like, mm-hmm. I, I drag his name up and down mm-hmm. in the mud mm-hmm. quite often. But um, I think he turned Batman into a failure. I think he did not understand the concepts of Superman and like what he really stood for. Even though New Fifty Two kind of changed the Superman mythos, I think like mm-hmm. you know, both like uh, Dan DiDio and DC comic books, along with Scott mm-hmm. Snyder, didn't like know what to do with Superman because mm-hmm. they they think the same thing. Like like a lot of people that think about Superman, like he's just too powerful and he's hard to write for. It. But that's mm-hmm. go back to what I said before. Like he that's the challenge of writing Superman. Like is to have that good, that truth, that, that justice. That's uh, that's right. the of him. Right, and you know, Superman's basically a Boy Scout. Yeah, you know, I mean, he believes in truth, justice, in the American way. You know, not he so much the American be- way anymore, but yeah. Well, not much the American yeah, way. Yeah. Not so much anymore, but yeah. Well, yeah, let's, let's push that. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going back to my days of my childhood. Yeah. Uh, when Superman was all about that, but um, he doesn't necessarily see things when I grew up with Superman, he necessarily didn't, and I could, you know, this is just my opinion. He didn't necessarily see the gray, which Batman did. Yeah. And I always viewed Batman and Superman as two sides of a coin. Batman was the dark side. Superman was the light. Um, And it's just like, you know, Superman did everything above board where Batman would go off the radar and do everything in the dark and do the things that Superman would not necessarily do. Yeah. No, that's the way I, I viewed it. Yeah, you know, I see that. And um, like, and now what, what, if you do read Bannis' run, he gives him more that gray because he has that sun now. So like right. you, see, you right. see Superman kind of like stepping up to that gray line mm-hmm. and, like, and, like, and like kind of like pushing it back ever so mm-hmm. often. Like mm-hmm. a, it's a it's an interesting story. It's not very tropey, and mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Bendis' writing or not. But like his his writing of multiple characters isn't usually the best, but he does a mm-hmm. he does a pretty good job with this. Like he uh, his his take on Lois Lane is really good. His uh his take on Jonathan Kent when Jonathan Kent was like was younger was really good. Mm-hmm. A lot of mm-hmm. people are pissed off because like they he made Jonathan Kent older and and kind of got rid of the whole Super Sons mm-hmm. stories. But I, I don't think that story going to last that long anyway because, mm-hmm. like, the ki- he couldn't join the Teen Titans. He couldn't join mm-hmm. the Young Justice. He couldn't mm-hmm. join any of those teams and branch off. Like, he had to be aged a bit more. But, like, uh, like it, for me, it sucks to see him not on Superman anymore, but hopefully he goes to something better in DC. Right. Like, I can't imagine right. what that title will be. What do you think mm-hmm. he'll do? You got any ideas? Like, what title he should probably be on besides Superman? I know he was. I know he was on just uh, Legion of Superheroes. Right. I know he was. Do, he did that one, and he look. Maybe a lot of people didn't like it, but I love the way he brought in diversity. Yeah. To, to, to you know, making Lightning Lad and Lightning Lace, um, 
uh, African American. Finally, yeah. Uh, finally, you know, so you know, giving a little bit more diversity and multiple culturalness to the Legion of Superheroes because if you're gathering all these heroes across the universe and you don't have any like black or like any like diverse looking character besides right, aliens, right. Like, it's kind of like yeah. you know, like a slap yeah. in the face. And, you know, because most of all the human characters or semi human were white. Yeah. You know, maybe you had. I think you had one black hero. <laughs> and he was a wolf. No, not Timberwolf, but it was one black. Oh, you're talking about besides uh, Timberwolf. No, his name was Tycho. Um, and his interesting, he had an interesting background. This is back when I was a kid. And I stumbled across the comic book that introduced him. And his people, he traced his ancestry back to the uh, age of slavery when his people were being brought over on a slave ship. Oh, wow. And something, yeah, something happened where their ship, they, I think they, up, they had an uprising on the ship and they ended up on an island and they built their own. It was like DC's version of Wakanda um, hmm. back in the Legion of Superheroes. And, you know, I'm going to find that issue and I'm going to send it to you. Please. Um, I'll let you know what it is. And I may not be counting the story right, but eventually what happened was that the island would disappear in time. It would just, you know, be in one be in one place, then it jump up in another place, and then it just would flip back and forth, flipping back and forth. And he ended up leading the season, a Legion of Superheroes because he had to go back to the island for some reason, and the island disappeared. So, what was the name of his character? Uh, I want to say Tyco. I think it was T Y C O. Tyroke? Yeah, I think. Just looking it up, see if I can find it. Yeah, that's yeah. him. He, he was in that, yeah. that cartoon show, too, apparently. Yeah. Yep. Had like a massive fro. My goodness. Yep. Yeah, that wicked yep. suit. That suit is freaking cool. Yeah, so in the comic book, he was just like, I think someone was thinking of Fred, uh, Fred the Hammer Williams when they drew him. I can see it in the costume, definitely. Yeah, yeah. He was also yeah. part of Legion Legion Loss, issue number fourteen. Tyroke, T Y R O C. Yeah. Tyroke. Yeah, yep. I'll look more yep. into him. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I was really excited that Bendis did that. I would love to see Bendis the the, the pick up some of the old Wildstorm titles and 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 bring them back to the forefront. That's not that's honestly truly not a bad idea. Like you know they, yeah. they have like the rights to those comic books and right, they're, not, right. they're not really using them right now. Like then yeah. they are a part of like you know the DC canon right now. So yeah, that's a that's a good idea. I like that. I would like him to go back to the original Team Seven storyline. I don't like the Team Seven storyline that DC did. Yeah, where it was uh, Diana Lance and uh, Grifter, and Amanda Waller, and a couple other, and I think Deathstroke was in that. Group. It, it felt like they were trying to just shove things inside of a story, like without having right. to make much sense to like to like the people who used to read those stories. No, I get you. Right, because Team Seven, me being a veteran, I think I was trying drawn to it, but with Team Seven, it was like hey, you had a bunch of these guys that were like the best of the best. And you sent them out on a mission and their command command decided to drop a bomb on them. And then, boom, now they have superpowers. And it was basically them going rogue, trying to understand, eventually going rogue, trying to understand their superpowers. And then, then you come back with Death Blow came out of that, and then Gen 13 came out oh of that. Oh, my God, the, yes, Gen 13. Yeah, yeah, were the children on that. And I wasn't really digging when they tried to bring Gen 13 back. And I think it was during the culling of Teen Titans when the Teen Titans had uh, Robin. I think it was Tim Drake. I don't think okay. it, it was Tim Drake. Yeah, Tim Drake was leading them. Um, and – they brought in, and that's how Superboy got brought in. It was like, and then Wonder Girl got brought in. Oh, you New mean like, like in, the, in the, the Brent Booth? Uh, Brent yes. Booth, that Liddell run of Teen Titans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't know what you're Yeah. I didn't read yeah. that. <laughs> I didn't read any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I said no thank you to all of that. Like, yeah, I don't, want, I don't want anything to do with the costumes. are so weird. The characters mm. are kind of dickish, just like all the yeah. other DC characters. Like, right. they, they were they were focusing too hard on, like, the Marvel aspect of what Marvel was doing. Right, And trying right. to put that into DC. Like, in DC, 
Marvel does not a DC make. Like it's the other way around. No. Like like DC made Marvel what it is. So yeah. I saw I saw DC as more of not as gritty as Marvel. I saw Marvel more gritty and I saw their heroes more street heroes. Yeah. Even though you had Iron Man and Thor and Captain Captain America, but they would get down in the streets and fight. Agreed. You know, not only fight aliens, but they were fighting people in the streets. And like their, DC, their solo stories were like really cool. Yeah, too. and they still say, I mean, yeah, Batman would fight in the streets and everything, but I just didn't get that feel for it. I felt they were more like grander. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Grander, grander. Um, but but going back to what we we're originally talking about, I would love to see Bendis on that because they, I think he could kind of reshape it and bring it back to what Jim Lee and them originally were were creating because if you go back to that Gen 13 run they not only turned um I forget her name Caitlin Fairchild was it Caitlin Fairchild they turned her from white to black yeah which you know and then they changed the bottom of it but like like she she had like the red hair like you you gotta go into the whole Wally West thing like with red hair characters like those those characters are kind of minuscule also when it comes like to putting them in like the literature and other properties right. so no I, right. I hear you there you know I, I don't have a problem with her being African American being black I didn't have a problem with it I just you just can't just say hey I'm just going to rewrite this issue you know I know they do that and reinvent things and yeah but I would like to see Vendis on that I would like to see what he could do with oh, yeah, some you of do the whole, like, you do the whole Wally West thing like make a give us two fair jobs yeah, give us two Fairchilds, you know, give us, you know, I would like to see what he could do with Deathblow. Yeah, oh um, gosh, yeah. Ripclaw was yeah. one of my favorites, for obvious Oh, yeah, oh, Ripclaw, <laughs> you knew Ripclaw was a definite ripoff from Wolverine. I mean, yeah, and like, but like his 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 character wasn't the same as Wolverine. He was more, no. more timid, more like, you know, like a, not wanting to be a part of the group most of the time, but like he had like mm-hmm. all that power inside of him. That was the cool right. part about Ripclaw, in my, in my personal opinion. Right, and then you had Warblade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you pretty much had two characters that were almost the same. <laughs> Identical to each other. One, yeah. yeah, one was in yeah, one was in Wildcats, and Ripclaw was in uh, Cyberforce. Was it Cyberforce? Yeah, I think we were thinking Cyberforce. Yeah. Yeah, it was Cyberforce because their leader Striker had like three arms. And I think that's who I'm thinking about. I think I'm thinking about Warblade. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. not Ripclaw. That's on me. Yeah. Got yeah, it mixed yeah. up. But like yeah. that's like you just said, like it's easy like to get those two mixed up. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, you had you had some more news, too, didn't you? Yeah. So they also also was disappointed to see Mike Tyson mysteries get canceled as well. Disappointing. Okay. <laughs> Go on. Well, <laughs> I, I was I was disappointed because I love the fact that Mike Tyson was making fun of himself. He was like making fun of all the things that people think about him. Right. And he was expressing it and embracing it on 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 the show. Um It was it was I cool gotta, to have Norm McDonald a part of the show. Like, he was hilarious on it. Oh, that I was a high point for him. It was. Yeah. I won't say I like I never watched a show, but like yeah, like uh, not the biggest fan of Mike Tyson. But yeah. hey, like for some people, it is a disappointment for a show to go away from for you know right. certain reasons. Right. But yeah, like right. yeah. And um, one other thing, um, just gonna put this out as a public announcement. I hate Lovecraft Country. I cannot stand it. Oh, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I can't. Wow. I cannot do it i finished rereading the book again just to make sure i didn't do anything and then um they made and they did a review of i think episode three or four and then in the book in the show the main character's father ends up slitting the throat of one of the main on one of the characters killing her and i'm like where did this come from I mean, I didn't watch it, so I don't know. I read the article. I don't know the context of it, but it just totally just turned me off to the show because I was going to get back into the show. Are you going to do, you gonna but, do what they, they call hate watching of the show? I might do some hate watching. Yeah? I might. I might. I might. Um, <laughs> and then one of my favorite characters, they killed off. And I'm like, well, he didn't die in a book. It, look, I get it. When you transfer it to TV, you – 
have the ability to do things that you can't you can do differently you know like with the marvel films you know they're doing things differently but for anybody who's read the book and this is just me and i've heard from other people who've read the book they're not happy with the series either really uh yeah yeah but that's that's probably just a few of us out there and um and you're probably going to get hate mail or Thumbs down. Hey, on they're going to give it to you. They're not gonna give it to That's me. what I'm saying. I haven't watched the show, so I'm not a part That's of it. That's what I'm saying. I know. I was like, oh, well, this may be the last show I co host. See? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is why I don't get aboard the hype train. Because, like, yeah, I don't need that in my yeah. life. No, thank you. No, 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 no. I mean, I was hyped. I was hyped. Yeah, you were very well, like, before sure. it came out. You were really like, man, yeah. Lovecraft Country. Like, I, like, I've been waiting for this. I read the book. I'm so excited yeah. for this. And then it comes out like, yeah, I don't like any of this. This is not good at all to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like the expanse. It's just like when we talked about the expanse. You know? yeah. It's pretty. See, it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. back up for it, you know? <laughs> oh, look at this giant stars. It's yeah. So pretty, These know? characters are dull and boring. My goodness. And like I watched Star Trek. I know like dull and boring characters. Like, but yeah, like the expanse, take the cake, man. What was the? Did you see the original Star Trek movie, the very first one? The the Star Trek the original, like the original motion yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah the original motion. Yeah, yeah. I like. Um, I try to. The first forty five minutes were tough to watch. Yes, yes. Like and then to find out it's didn't to find out it's a satellite. <laughs> the first 45 minutes was tough to watch <laughs> so I got to tough I dude like tough tough I know, I know. and um, I, I, I like the original Star Trek um, Next Generation is golden in my eyes uh, mm -hmm. New Space Nine the most the most underappreciated show that I that like that no fans talk about as much as they should. Like fans should talk about Deep Space Nine as much as they talk about Next Generation because the, the nuances they put into that show, man, my goodness. They put so much, like they're on a station the entire time with mm -hmm. tons of alien cultures mm -hmm. coming and going. And, like, and mm -hmm. like they're interacting with the Federation. And like, mm -hmm. if you watch like Discovery, knowing, like spoiler, knowing like, like the Federation collapsed upon itself, like mm -hmm. seeing Deep Space Nine, they know like that's supposed to be the future of that Star Trek universe. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's mind blowing, dude. Like right. that, could, that could be part of the reason why the Federation, like, Federation imploded upon itself because they couldn't handle like their way of life with those other cultures like coexisting with each other. Like it's just whatever. People people didn't talk about Deep Space Nine when I was younger and it bothers me. Probably like, they had a black captain and that kind of goes entirely against what Starfleet is all about, but whatever, hypocrites. Well, you know why I love Star, uh, why I like Deep Space Nine. Do tell. It's because because of the black captain who was played by Avery Brooks, God, who played Hawk, who played Hawk on Spencer for Hire. This fucking guy. <laughs> and I know, I know, I am worthless to not. Now look, you're, you're that guy. Spencer, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a bad show. Guy. Just like, like you, you love the sportation, man. You love that shit. <laughs> well, well, look. That's Hawk made that show. Let's yeah. just say Avery Brooks made that show. I give you on yeah. Spencer for Hire. Just the way he would say Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I read some reviews. I, I read, so I went back and read something up on Avery Brooks because I was like, this guy was a great actor. Whatever yeah. happened to him? And a lot of people were disappointed when he came over to Deep Space Nine, and he didn't kind of carry that Hawk character into that role. And I'm just like, why would he do that? Me? <laughs> why would you do that why would you go you know like his favorite thing was like uh, like you know he would laugh and just like stop you know he, he's playing a hitman i Spencer mean yeah for hire, a ruthless hitman in Spencer for hire it, and then you want him to kind of be like that on deep space nine no as, no, as no, a starfleet no. captain are you crazy yeah, star <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, like, like, but here's the thing, though. Like, you, you got to see Brooks in, like, in different shapes and modes in right, space. Not right. like he got to be right. so many different things in that show, man. Right, right, right. Whatever. It was, it, it, whatever. People want to typecast, what, motherfuckers. That's all it is. Yeah. And then if you throw in, um, the when they went back and with uh, Scott Bakula playing Enterprise. All right. Yeah, I like that show. I like that it, one. It's not a fan favorite for a lot of people, but um, mm -hmm. here's my thing about Enterprise. Like, um, mm -hmm. 
I watched the two first seasons, mm -hmm. and I didn't make it to the third. I still haven't. Mm -hmm. I've been trying. But uh, after they went, after they went in time to the past, and like Earth was destroyed. Spoiler alert. And like, <laughs> I know it's like a like how many year old show and like an Earth was destroyed and like it was trying to be like some kind of alien simulation but like it wasn't really alien simulation but I had to go back in time again to fix that problem like dude I'm out like too much I love time travel I love time travel but that was too much for me too much yeah 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 I mean it was a struggle to get through the first season when you felt it was those, with those what were they lizards. Or some type of lizard creatures that they did like the main antagonists on the show. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could like when you fought them, you couldn't really fight them because they kept going in and out of time, phasing in and out. So like you would throw a punch and they phase out, then they would phase in and hit you. Um, it was, it was, and then they were like crawling on the ceiling, like was, some yeah. type of yeah. The, the cast was good though. Like I'll make like an yeah. Enterprise. The cast they had a good cast. Yeah. Like, the right. acting was good. The cast was good. Like, you got to see, like, the first ever Enterprise mm -hmm. Duder thing. And, like, and they were very reminiscent of, like, how we are today. And, like, that was the mm -hmm. real core part about it. Like, their emotions mm -hmm. were still kind of there. You know, they, they, mm -hmm. were, they were a bit more polished and, like, you know, than, like, like our military right now. Like, it was, it was put together in a, in a way that I respected. It was just... Right. It was just... A, a lot of stuff was just, like, just thrown to a wall. And, like, they want to see a stick... And I think they were trying to capture what Enterprise, mm -hmm. what the, the first Enterprise was, and like, you know, mm -hmm. the Next Generation. If they tried to like they capture both of those shows and see mm -hmm. what, what worked well for, like and it didn't it didn't do that well. No. No, but I the one there's one uh Star Trek show you did not mention. Voyager? Yeah. I haven't watched Voyager yet, that's why. Like it, mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch that after I finish D Space Nine. And I got like yeah. maybe 15 episodes left of Deep Space Nine. Then I'm watching Voyager. All right. All right. Well, you let me know how you think of that. Cool. I, I, can't, I can't say much about it because I haven't watched it. Like, uh, like you, you see myself. Like, uh, it's hard for me like, to not to talk about stuff being good or bad or in between. Right. But like, I can't, right. I, in, all, in all good conscience, I can't say anything unless I watch it because that would just be rude of me to do so. so. <laughs> right, 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 right. But uh, in more DC news, like, uh, Mark Wade is back. Like, that's a blip. Mark Wade's coming back to D.C. Hopefully, he pops on his Twitter, and we see what happens. I hope he doesn't right. make, a, make a mockery of himself coming to D.C. Like, I don't mind Mark Wade, like, uh, what he does on Twitter. Like, you know, I, it never bothered me. But, mm. like, he likes to get in fights with his fans for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know why. That's his thing. But uh, in other D.C. news, Batman Beyond is canceled. Finally. Thank goodness. Yeah. I know, right? Batman Beyond is canceled. Ah, I'm happy. Whatever. <laughs> uh, the writer, Dan Jurgens, is the, the ongoing writer for Batman Beyond. And uh, I think it's Sean Shin. Sorry to see him lose a job. And I think Dan Mora has been doing the covers for it. Mm -hmm. It's been like a, mm -hmm. it's been a whirlwind of story. You can see Damian Wayne is a little bit older, kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. running the League of Assassins. You get to see Wonder Woman pop in and out. You got to see mm -hmm. a new Batwoman. Uh, you got to see Batgirl show up. You got to see uh, a new Robin pop up inside this as well. Like, it's been a lot of different stuff. Uh, Dan Jurgen tried to create pretty much like a new DC universe, futurized mm -hmm. inside of the uh, Batman Beyond universe. And as much as I don't like Jurgens, he did a good job. Like a lot of fans mm -hmm. loved it, but hey, thankfully, it's getting canceled. So call me petty. <laughs> call me petty. Don't care. Don't really care for Dan Jurgens. He's kind of a he's kind of an ass hat. So I'm not sure how you feel about that. Do you read Batman Beyond? Look, I didn't read anything Batman Beyond after the <laughs> show went off. After the show went off, I didn't want anything to do with it. Oh because wow! Because the because the way they capped it off. Because I think it was in Justice League Unlimited, or was it Batman Beyond, where they finally told that story and you found it was just out, the yeah, you, you about, found yeah. out that that was Batman's son, Ill illegitimate clone son, illegitimate son. Him and his yeah. brother were the illegitimate children of Bruce Wayne, and that Amanda Waller was the it. one behind it whole thing. But here's the thing, and, though, dude. That story made sense to the character of Amanda Waller. Like, it made right. sense in the story right. of Amanda Waller would do some heinous shit like that. 
Right. And the fact that she came around, she's like, look, love him or hate him, but society cannot exist without a Batman in it. Period. You need a Batman, period. <laughs> and, you know, and the part that the way it ended when he opened the bottle and gave the medicine to Bruce and then told his girlfriend, I'll be late or whatever, and went out to go do his thing. I said, that was the perfect ending for me. For Batman that Beyond perfect... in general. Yeah, Batman Beyond in general. That's the way, you know, totally happy with that. Hmm. Because it was because it was better than when they went in the future and he and he got ripped in half. Oh, do you remember? Right. Uh, uh, right. Uh, once in future thing, I think it was. It was like a three part yeah. episode, and yeah. it was uh, yeah. Cronus. Cronus showed yep. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, and, I, I, know, I know, like you said, like you're very anti Batman Beyond. But did you read the Justice League two point oh and Batman Beyond two point oh? No, I did not. Oh no, my god, I did not. I, I hear what you're saying with the episode, mm -hmm. like how that probably should have been the last one. But uh, the Justice League 2.0 brought back like the Justice Lords. Oh wow! Yeah, in the future, I know. See, you say you say like you know that's a good ending, but come on, man, they brought them back, and like Terry had to fight them off. Like it was cool. It was really cool. I like the fact that uh, Hot Girl found out in the future that she had a son with John Stewart. That was cool. Mike and, Stewart, yeah. Yeah, and then when she came back, Green Lantern's like, yeah, I know what the future, but that doesn't change things between Vix and I. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you, I'm not a puppet of destiny, yeah. yeah right, right. <laughs> you know, and then she sat down and asked Batman, tell me about my son. You know that still was going to happen. You know, that was still in the timeline, regardless if you knew it or not, it was still going to happen. You know, there's the theory that you say, hey, if you see something, if you go, go into the future or you go back in time, you can change your destiny or whatever. But then there's fixed points in times. No matter what you're going to do, my theory is this, no matter how you change something, you're still going to get to that point. You may not get to it the way you were supposed to, right. but you're still going to get there. You know, um, unless you take that, and this is the way I postulate it when I write, unless you take that equation out, then multiverse. things are going to change. Yeah, multiverse. I mean, like just well, saying, like, have... multiverse kind of like, yeah, kind of throws that right out the window at times, yeah. Right, right. Or like Jet Li's The One. <laughs> <laughs> hey, or, uh, or was that that, that Jake Gyllenhaal film? I forget, the source code is what it, what it was? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Or like, yeah. like, like all time is like it's in the same line of each other. Mm -hmm. It's just like you're you're visiting that time that's like a line mm -hmm. of yours at different moments of when it happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or uh, Denzel Washington's out of time. Deja, or deja vu. Yeah. Yeah. Deja vu. Yeah. yeah. That was deja vu, wasn't it? Or mm -hmm. out of time. It was deja vu. Where it was like deja he was. Vu. He was living in like one time period, but like he met mm. up with himself, like met up with himself, like going back in time at a different time period. Right. Back, but he, in that movie, it was a Mobius strip, like essentially. That movie, like he was, right. he was locked in that time period, like forever. Yep. Time it was time, like a loop. Yeah. Time, time was loop. continuously going, but he was stuck in that one, that one mm -hmm. fixed time over and over again. I love Mobius strips. Right. I, I, right. I right. love Mobius strip movies. Love them. Right. Love them right. So much. I, I get it. Like, I understand. Like, the, the beautiful part about a Mobius strip is, like, Mobius strip does not dictate the time of itself. It dictates the time of one mm. person and their right. interactions in that time. Right. Like, that's why I love and, Mobius strip. And how can I break free of where I'm fixated at? If, you know? if at all. Because in 12 Monkeys, in that movie, he did not break free. No, he did not. He, he was forever stuck in that Mobius strip. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He was. And the little boy who was him seeing himself get killed over and over again constantly in that mobius strip yeah <laughs> but see doesn't that kind of contradict itself that if you went into that time and you and you see yourself you made a paradox doesn't that can't yeah you get a paradox doesn't that cancel it out depending on like what kind of like you know scientific equations you're using in like when it comes to time yeah. travel yeah mm -hmm. I mean, in Timecock, they did that where uh, Ron Silver, uh, where the, the villain was like, "Hey, don't touch me," you know. Because when you do like, matter, like, they they fuse together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Same matter can't <laughs> be in the same space at the same time. 
You know, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. My favorite kind of paradox <laughs> is when you touch and like, everything explodes. That's my favorite kind of paradox. But you know, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the 90s. Yeah. That's the 90s kid in me. So whatever. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. I think that's it for news. Did you have? Uh, you want to talk about Crisis on Infinite Earths? Yes. So Crisis on Infinite Earth. So. D and I had agreed that we were going to pick books and we're going to read and then we're going to talk about <laughs> D kind of dropped but, the ball on that. <laughs> yeah, but D's going to look at it from the show and I'm going to look at it, uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earth that was done on the CW Arrowverse, and I'm going to look at it as it was originally written. Now, this is the thing I'm going to say. As far as I got through, I think this was written just to get rid of a lot of characters. Dude, yes. <laughs> like that, and like, and like, if in in history context, that's what Crisis on Infinite Earth was. Like it was a way, much like how Secret Wars had its like mm -hmm. has a way of and like the Infinity Gauntlet, like mm -hmm. in, in this time had its way. This was written to get rid of all the constructs of like a bad writing throughout time. Mm -hmm. Like zero and they kept it going with zero hour yeah. and other stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So back to this because I think Dee's going to read it but I'm going to take you to where I am so far. Dude, and the story is like 30 years old like you want to spoil yeah. stuff, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so first off I have no idea how the CW pulled this off because there were so many nuances in this story from one, it opens up with Pariah seeing a lot of these universes starting to be destroyed. And then from there, it's from him going from different Earth to different Earth and gathering these heroes. And then there's Lex Luthor from Earth 3, which is the son of Lex Luthor and Lois Luthor, who plays a pivotal role in this story. Um, you have two Superman in this story, and Supergirl dies mm -hmm. in the, the pivotal, this. The pivotal, like, holding Supergirl up saying, Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. She dies, and, and she's wearing this, like, headband this red headband <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i'm like no, what are you talking about yeah <laughs> yeah i'm like what is that? and then you know then you, i guess for her earth the trinity was her power girl and huntress yeah um which as a caveat in the uh huntress and power girl crossed over into i think I forget which Earth and became Batgirl and Supergirl. Yeah. Um, but I, I digress. So basically in this story, you have Pariah trying to figure out why he's being forced to witness all these different at first. And like then there's he was Car crying when it was happening too, wasn't it? Yeah, he was he's literally crying. Like literally and crying. As you get through, yeah. And as you find out through the story, you realize he's the reason why all these Earths are being destroyed. And one of the things I like about this, the version I have is, as I can show everybody, is this big, thick book it's here. Huge. Right. This version, and I believe this one is written by, who, who was this one? Oh, you don't know? No, I do. It was, this is the deluxe edition. So you need to get what I well, meant. It's, it's, mul it's multiple writers attached to That's what you're yeah, getting at. Yeah, okay. yeah, this is the deluxe edition of it. And it this like one goes. Perez. Like, like, dude. I know, Perez. All right, wrote. I was about to say, man. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, easy. Yeah. <laughs> what I meant is what version it was. You know, it's the deluxe edition. And there's that scene, as he says, you know. Um, but. It has a lot of history, DC history in this. It, you know, in the, it just gives you a lot of DC history. It breaks down how you got to this point. It goes back even to the point where Kronos, talking about how Kronos, the original, uh, one of the original um, uh, uh, scientists in the race that would become the guardians over the uh, uh, Green Lanterns, how he created a time machine and went back in time and witness the creation of the universe and then something goes wrong with his machine and boom the earth starts replicating itself and you get the multiverse <laughs> it, it it goes back to that episode we were talking about before justice league where like you know no man should see the beginning of time yeah. right right yeah. so my question to you did they cover that in the cw uh they, they they went to the beginning of time inside the cw show uh it mm -hmm. was more with the anti-monitor mm -hmm. and anti-monitor and his wife and like they were messing around with the beginning of time mm -hmm. 
but Pariah was there in a way. Mm-hmm. And like he didn't blame himself for what was happening. So they they caught they they kept some of the traces like uh, like the nuances that was uh, a part of that story, mm-hmm. but like mm-hmm. not not in the way that like that you're describing it to me right now. Like some some of it it was mostly revolving around the Anti Monitor, but I think they did that mostly because they wanted to give that character who right. played Anti Monitor more screen time. It, so here's one thing. Here's one thing I'm gonna also bring up the book. The Anti Monitor and the Monitor were created because of what. Uh, Kronos did it they were a repercussion of it so you had the positive the multiverse and the antiverse and the uh, uh, anti uh, monitor was born in the antiverse the same time the monitor was born in the multiverse and they waged the battle between each other and then for and then in the last battle they both knocked each other unconscious and for like 10 billion years they slept but wow, that sounds like good old-fashioned 80s comic book right there doesn't it right you know, and then pariah pariah's character was like this scientist that he had cured everything you know um you know and cured the common cold cancer and everything everything was great because of his scientific scientific mind and this is just me speaking in generalities because he wanted to see the nature of the universe and how the universe was created, just like Cronus, he went and started messing around with things and created this cube so he could go in and watch the universe become created. Mm. But in doing so, he caused the destruction of his world universe and woke up the Anti-Monitor. And that's when the Anti-Monitor started on his quest of destroying the universe because when he woke up, he realized with the destruction of Pariah's, uh, Pariah's universe, he grew stronger, and that's why he was destroying the universes in the in the in the in the book. I forget who it was that woke the Anti Monitor. I forget who it was. I, it could have been Pariah. It could have been could have been someone else. Uh, but like the 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 same thing you're talking about with Pariah was the same mm-hmm. thing that happened in the show also. Like he was like mm-hmm. a great seer. He was a, like, a very smart person. He was like mm-hmm. one, one. I think he was part of the reason why the Anti Monitor was there. But I think mm-hmm. it was a Monitor who also had something to do with the fact that the Anti Monitor was there also. But mm-hmm. like, like the way the way you described it, it seemed like Pariah is like it's like the catalyst to all of this. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the CW show, it was Green Arrow who was the catalyst to everything for obvious reasons. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's the Arrowverse. Yeah. yeah. So Stephen Amell, hey, we got to give him something to do. This <laughs> is last time being on the show, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, Captain Adam played a pivotal part. The Freedom Fighters played a pivotal part. Uncle right. Sam from the Freedom Fighters. Um, Jay. <laughs> Jay Garrick? I, no, Jay. Green Lantern Jay. Oh, Jade. Yeah, she plays a part in uh, the, the part I've gotten to. Uh, Green Lantern from Earth 2, Justice League, uh, Justice Society. Alan Scott? Uh, Alan Scott, he plays a key role into it. Um, Ray from the Freedom Fighters. Um, Obsidian? Lady. No, no, uh, Ray with the jacket. Ray. Yeah. 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 Ray, Ray. The, yeah, from the Freedom Fighters. He's all, no, this Ray's all gold. He's not Ray with the jacket. This with, is the, with, the, with the gold helmet? Yeah, with the fin. Yeah. 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 He's, he's yeah, a gold yeah. jacket. Is his jacket yeah, not yeah. Like this one? He doesn't have a jacket in this one. He's Ooh. just in a, in a, in a, I know that jacket is sweet. It is. Uh, he's just <laughs> he's just he's just in a gold costume. Okay. Yeah, and then you've got um, who who are other heroes in here? Um, I'm flipping through here real quick because I'm trying to remember. Oh, you yep. got Johnny. You got Johnny Quick. You got Wildcat. And this in this one is interesting because if you watch Star Girl, which I'm, I have to say I like Star Girl. It's a it's really good one. show. Yeah. It's the best CW show. It really is. is. You know, I hope it doesn't I mean, get convoluted. I, might, I really hope it doesn't get convoluted. I know. I might put Black Lightning under it out of all the other ones, you know, but this is where Wildcat gets, uh, she becomes Wildcat. Oh, wow. And here, she becomes Wildcat. And I'm not sure if it's the same character's name, but during the crisis when they're trying to save people as the universes are being destroyed, Wildcat gets his legs crushed, and she takes over the Wildcat 
costume without anybody knowing. And wow. she she goes off to try to prove herself to be the Wildcat. Yolanda Montez, uh, right? Yep, Yolanda Montez. This is when she gets the costume, as in here. Um, and where I'm at, the Spectre and the Phantom Stranger and Dead Man all are being, are standing out of it. Um, you know, because Dead Man's like, why aren't we getting involved in like the Phantom Stranger and uh, they, they can't Spectre? Pretty much. They can't. It's like our magic is it has nothing. We can't. We can't do anything. Yeah. Which is different from the CW, right? Because from from the trailers I saw, the Spectre did get involved. He did. And, like uh, he 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 invited himself into uh, <laughs> into Green Arrow, and like you know gave. <laughs> <laughs> he gave his powers to Green Arrow. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's just as crazy as like you know as him giving his power to Hal Jordan, but you know it's whatever, which he did. Yeah, if, if yeah. You didn't know, yeah, he did. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's Psycho Pirate plays a huge role in this. You know what? Uh, Psycho Pirate, Psycho, Psycho Pirate is more one of those those, those clutch characters because his power is, is so OP and it can do mm -hmm. so much. And, like you can mm -hmm. only use him when when he's really needed. Like you know. He, he was he played a part in that whole that new Batman series with Tom King and like he mm. wasn't really shown that much until like he was really absolutely needed. So like yeah, Psycho Pirate is mm. one of those, one of those clutch characters that, that use like the rewrite stuff when they need to be rewritten. Right, and when you get into the story, the Flash is already dead. He's disappeared, and he starts popping up in here. And it's during a scene when Batman's scraping off against the Joker, and Bat and the Joker's got the drop on Batman. And the flash pops in. It's sort of like you saw, I don't know if you saw Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League. Yeah. Do you remember You remember the part when uh, Bat Affleck, as I call him, was sleeping and Ezra Miller popped out? And so it was kind of like a scene like that. Okay. And, and the Joker's like, oh, what the hell? Oh, this is, it's like, it's a funny part because he's like, this isn't fair. You're supposed to be in Coast City. You're not supposed to be here in Gotham. Mm. And and then Batman's like, wait a minute, what's Flash doing here? He's disappeared. And that kind of gets the ball rolling. Because <clears throat> the anti monitor kidnaps Flash and brings him to his universe along with the psycho pirate. Because the psycho pirate was originally recruited by the monitor. And at the same time, while all this is going on, Brainiac is snatching supervillains off the different earths like he's grabbing Le yeah from different multiples like he's grabbing lex luger he grabbed black mana and ocean master he grabbed uh dr Sh shiv Sh uh shiva okay captain marvel's uh antagonist, arch enemy yeah. antagonist he snatches yeah. him he just starts you know these villains pop up and he just starts snatching them and taking them to his ship and his plan is to take over the universe now, Dark Side comes in here somewhere, and I haven't gotten to that part yet. But all I'm going to say is I'll continue reading this and giving you reviews on it. But I'm saying if you saw the Arrowverse version of this, you are going to be sorely disappointed when you read this. Because <laughs> they're full of me the same. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, you know, let's just say um, – yeah, Dave, don't read any more books before you watch anything. <laughs> uh, but I mean, that look, seems to be a trope with you, apparently. Like, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. But just look, you got the team. You got the Teen Titans with Nightwing's yeah. uh, original crew. You've got uh, the Batman and the Outsiders. You, you know, Katana's showing up. She plays a pivotal role. You even got Judo Master, who I haven't wow. even heard of. Judo or Master. Seen in a, yeah, Judo Master. I mean, I have the whole DC encyclopedia, so I know of him, but he's in there. The wow. original Blue Beetle is in there. Um, and the Vigilante, the, the, uh, yeah, it's just a, a whole host of heroes. Like, As a matter like, of fact, it like, like they go. Cowboy Vigilante, too, I'm guessing, right? Yes, Cowboy Vigilante. They wow. actually, at, actually, at one point, they go back and, and because one of the machines ends up in the Old West, and they teamed up with. Uh, I forget the team that went back in, but basically they run into John Hex, El Diablo. Nice. All, all the characters in that in that Western time period. Very cool. Yeah, and they even did a thing with the ghost tank. 
and Sergeant Rock. Mm. And the reason I have a problem with the ghost tank is because it's Jeb Stewart and a damn Confederate flag. Mm. Yeah, so they did a thing with that. Uh, they have a part with that. So it's it's like, like I said, like you and I agreed, this is a way to just write out a whole bunch of heroes and villains. It's so it sounds, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's like, <laughs> the one part was cracking me up is Firestorm and Killer Frost. Um, Psycho Parrot messes with her so bad that she's chasing after Firestorm through half this part of the story, confessing her love for him. And he's spinning her off. And then at the point where they finally get Psycho Pirate to stop him from affecting everybody, and he tries to flirt with her, she threatens to kill him. And so he was like, what the hell just happened? You're chasing me around, and now you want to kill me. It, yeah. It's an interesting read. Um, like you said, it's 80s. but It sounds very um, Perez, too. It's like, it's like like the way it uh, flows together. It sounds very Perez. Yeah. Yeah, like he, he likes and to like, stack stuff on top of things. That's, that's what sounds okay. like you're telling me right now. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff being stacked on top of things. And one of the things I did, I skipped to the end of the book. And at the end of the book, they do this extensive history of the DC world. Where how, or take it from when the universe was born to when life took place in the universe to when the first heroes appeared to how heroes got to the became prevalent on earth who, or how who, many who were the first heroes was it just the justice society of america no it was uh actually aliens really it was an alien alien race um yeah and you know they did talk about the gods and the, the new gods the new and gods, dark yeah. side yeah dark side um there were heroes and during the age of the pirates, heroes during the Revolutionary War, um, the West, I mean, they go pretty, pretty in depth on how we get to where we are right now. Um, and so, yeah, if you can get the deluxe edition of Crisis on Infinite Earth by Perez. Just grab it. Um, just grab it. Just grab it. I saw it and I grabbed it and I did not know what I was getting. Um, so <laughs> from how you're talking, yeah, it doesn't sound like yeah, it's not all like you yeah. didn't get into. <laughs> no, and that's why I'm only halfway through the book because there's so much in here. Yeah, you know, uh, so yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm going to try to finish it before we get to our next uh, segment, um, which hopefully you'll read the book by then. Um, uh, you know what? I'm going to grab my tablet. I'm like going to comb through it, and I can if I have my tablet and that's opening inside of it. Like it'd be the first mm -hmm. thing I see when I pop it open. So right, right now right. I think I'm still reading Justice League Dark and I think they're setting something up big for Justice League Dark. I'm a second volume of that run. I think they're setting up something oh. big. So it's good. Like I, 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 like I, need it. To, I need to get back into Justice League Dark because I started collecting Justice League Dark when it first came out. With uh, Frankenstein and Constantine, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I really, I really got into it. But the problem was, look, it gets expensive, you know, trying to buy all these yeah, single issues. It does. And I was like, <clears throat> I said, I'll wait until it came out in trade, and I never went back. And so that's my <laughs> new approach. I buy everything in trade. I buy everything in trade. It, it's honestly it the best option. Me. And like that, that's yeah, how I sell comic books now. It's in trade. So yeah. Yeah. No. No. So yeah, that's yeah. So you also got to read Hel Harlem Hellfighters as well. Harlem Hellfighters. Uh yeah okay yeah the the, the civil war is not civil war but... no nope. no nope. it's the one sorry I disappeared off the screen apologize it's the one with uh by Max Brooks about World War One you said remember, uh, I'm talking about like the son yeah. of uh, Mel Brooks right yeah right right which is a surprisingly awesome read um you find yourself you know they go through how Racism during that time was so prevalent during World War I um, and how the Jim Crow era was, was, was starting to, you know, really pick up speed. And the, what as an African-American male or black male you faced, even in the U.S. military, the racism. You know, there's one point where in the book where they're sent to the southern town to train 
uh, this black infantry unit, and they go into town and they're trying to just get some mail. Um, and it's three of them. And as they're walking through the town, the white residents are just looking at them, just looking at them. And then they get attacked by these three, uh, by some of the townspeople. And there's this part in there that just really just, you know, really personifies the hate that that you experience at that time where they got them beaten. They got the three infantry soldiers beaten down, black soldiers down. And one of them is kneeling down and saying, look, let me explain how it works down here. There's three things here. There's white man, there's the dog, and then you're, and then they're shit. And you're lower than shit. And says that to the black infantry men. And before they can be any, any more uh, uh, accosted, they're rescued by some white uh, MPs. And they go back to their command. And then eventually they get over to France and they're thinking they're going to fight. But no, they get sent to dig ditches and work on the, on, on the ships and unload ships and everything like that. And then the command decides, well... Let's send them over to the French. So the French takes them and the French put them on the front lines. And they start fighting and proving themselves. And they get awarded the highest honor by the French military, but they still don't get accepted by the US military. I mean, if you go back in that history, you find out a lot of those guys, and this is a fictional version of the history, but it pretty much is drawing from actual historical events there during that time but when they came back a lot of those guys who wore their uniform home probably got beat up for wearing their uniform you know these guys went over and served in in world war one and for their country and they're not recognized they weren't even allowed to i don't think they were even allowed to march in the victory parade um, and a lot of those veterans ended up in Tulsa, living in Tulsa, and were heavily involved in the fighting in the 1921 uh, race uh, incident in Tulsa, the Tulsa massacre. There were some of the ones who were out there defending uh, Black Wall Street. So, and that's another thing I want to point out, and I know we're over our time, is that Watchmen and Lovecraft Country, particularly in the book, there's a pivotal part in the book where one of the main characters was in Tulsa during the massacre. And I think it's very important that that is, um, I find that very interesting, not important actually, I find it very interesting that both the Watchmen TV show and the book by Matt from Ruff call attention to the Tulsa massacre um, and that Harlem Hellfighters, it doesn't bring you there, but you, re but as you read historically, some of these veterans did end up living in Tulsa. Well, that's interesting. <clears throat> Sorry. I didn't mean to go. So I didn't mean to go so deep. I apologize. No, you're good. I just uh, <laughs> didn't know much about it. And this is about the same guy who did uh, World War Z and did, uh, yes. Uh, a couple Which, of books that uh, yeah. zombie, the zombie survival guide. Yeah. Yep. 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 And he also did a documentary on it um, where he talked about it, where he felt that these heroes did not get their just rewards and he wanted to share this with the world. And, uh, and, and, it's, and it's, you know, I think it's one of the pivotal books that people should be reading right now, given how society is right now and the climate we're in. I think we need to revisit a lot of things. Um, especially at this time. But. All right. Well, it's on Amazon, Harlem Hellfire. If you haven't read it, Christ on Infinite Earth, also on Amazon. You can check that out. Mm -hmm. uh, no many, not many bookstores are open right now to pick up those books, but you can get on Kindle, get it from like, mm -hmm. get it from Amazon, take it paperback. It's like 15 bucks. So check it out. Uh, we'll be back next week. Same time. Post is every Tuesday. It's recorded at a different time. So again, time traveling we're time traveling right now this is taking place on x day and you'll sit on tuesday so we're in that mobius loop 
There you go. See, you get it. You're already there. And like, and t and technically, this is a video, so you can just constantly watch this and live in this moment. So there you go. <laughs> and he will have watched witching and bitching by the time we get this video back up. Yeah, yeah, I'll be all over it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm D. This is Comic and Austin. You guys all have right. a good one.